Hello, I initially hadn't really filmed an introduction to this video. I kind of just jumped straight in with the whole, but upon editing and reflection, I would definitely like to say some things about my mentality when it comes to thrifting and thrifting as a whole. I thrift first and foremost, and perhaps most obviously because it is fun. <laughs> I love the experience of thrifting and how rewarding it is, you know, when you really commit to the bit and scour the same thrift stores over and over and dig through the one pound bins and come out with the dress of your dreams and nobody else will have. I also thrift because it is economical, environmental and ethical. Because I'm editing, I'm filming this on my laptop which is obviously a different camera to what I was using earlier and the camera is up there and I'm not used to looking there but I'm gonna try and look there now. Hi! <laughs> if you've been following me for a while or at least a small amount of time you'll know that I'm very careful to not post holes or hole adjacent activity on my platforms. That's because I'm so afraid of feeding into the overconsumption that is conditional of the hyper aestheticization of one's self and one's life. I know I am in a massively influential position when it comes to what people buy and where they buy it from and this is why I like to promote slow consumption, conscious consumption, slow fashion. It's funny because 80% of my comments across my platforms are usually people asking where I got a particular piece from and You'd think that it would be good to respond to them saying thrifted, but more often than not, I'm chastised because people think that I'm gatekeeping or that I'm lying. <laughs> I'm terrified of the way that apps with punchy short form content do, the way they instigate and the way they perpetuate these rapid trend cycles that we feel like we all have to buy into as a means of finding our identity and a means of finding ourselves by a style. My intention with broadcasting this haul is of course A, to show off the really cool pieces that I found because I'm proud, but B, to show you that you can consume consciously and still find yourself and find unique style and look for pieces that are going to supplement your identity. Thrifting has more or less shaped my entire style. I've found a love for vintage pieces, I've found a love for uh, era-based fashion, and I don't sell, I've never bought to resell, I buy pieces that I want. It's also important for me to say that I am not shaming or demonizing those who can't thrift. I understand that thrifting is not inaccessible for many people due to reasons like sizing, location, disability, and I'm not I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I'm instead just sharing my experience and the way that thrifting benefits my lifestyle and my personal style development because it is easy and accessible for me to consciously consume. If, like me, slow fashion is just as accessible to you as fast fashion, then there really shouldn't be a question about it. I really could keep on going about this forever. This is a topic that I am quite passionate about, but I feel I should condense it so we can just get to the haul because I know that you all just want to see the haul. Before I jump into the haul, I am going to segue into this video's very convenient sponsor and that is Skillshare. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who wants to learn a new skill, expand their creativity, even advance in their dream career. I am an avid user of Skillshare, but usually for classes to expand on my creativity and so for the sake of this video I wanted to find a class that's relevant and I'm so grateful that I came across this class here from Hannah Ross, slow fashion design for everyone. This class taught me how to naturally dye fabrics and upcycle them and how to both hand sew and machine sew, two things I generally suck at and beg a friend to do for me. <laughs> Knowing small things like these are imperative to the life cycle of slow fashion and the longevity of our clothing. Skillshare also offers so much more like career focused classes that are perfect for reinventing yourself and pursuing your passions. I recently took this class here on creative confidence and it inspired and motivated me and reminded me why I do what I do which is so important. Luckily for my viewers, that's you, the first 1000 people to follow the link in the description box and sign up to Skillshare will get a one month free trial and I'm telling you, I always will tell you, it's worth it. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and now I suppose you want to see some stuff. <laughs> start with clothes because I know that that's probably the most exciting part to many people, although I think it's books. Also homewares, you know, let's not forget about homewares. But I'm going to start with this. <laughs> this adorable hat that I thrifted, I think for four quid. I don't know if it's a true vintage or antique piece. It might be a reproduction. But it feels right. It's got nothing on the tag. I mean, that's a thing with thrifting. You really sometimes have no way of knowing if it's a cheap reproduction or a truth piece. But I really love it and I've been getting lots of wear out of it. And now it's spring. 
coming into summer and this is going to be my staple piece. I don't know if this is a universal thing, but in Australia growing up, I suppose because we have no ozone layer, but there was this thing called no hat, no play. And so it's drilled into me that in spring and summer, you have to have a hat. <laughs> and so this is my hat for spring and summer. <laughs> the next piece I thrifted in North London when I was ever seeing a friend. And this is like a really cute kind of coaty cardigan y thing. This one was more expensive. I think it was 19 quid that I paid for this. But this is a very expensive brand. Well, not very expensive, but it's more expensive than most, I'd say. It's LK Bennett. And it really is just high quality and I'm going to wear it everywhere and it's so, it just feels so 60s and I'm trying to be more era conscious when I dress now and I feel like 60s is a really fun thing to do. <laughs> the next is a bag that I thrifted and I, this is this is fresh, this is from yesterday, it's still got the tag on it. This is from All Aboard. All Aboard is actually my favourite thrift store chain in London that I've found thus far. I feel like it's just got random stuff and it's pretty cheap. You know, when it's got really random stuff and you have to kind of dig through bins a bit, that's one of the good ones. Sometimes they're over-curated, like... Which one's over-curated? I think it's the cancer research ones that are really curated. And that's wonderful. But I like to dig, you know? I like the weird stuff. And this was three quid. <laughs> I don't know why I'm demonstrating putting it around my neck, but this is... I don't know if you can see. It's kind of like a velvet... A velvet emerald greeny kind of colour. And... I don't think it's high quality at all, but I think it's cute and it was three quid and I'm definitely getting use out of this. And look at that colour. You know? I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I was so excited about this one when I got it. This is 100% English wool. I think it's an old school skirt, but like, you know, it's for me now. And it's a tartan skirt. <laughs> St. Michael's. The brand is St. Michael's. And I think I spent like five quid on this because she gave it to me for less because there's a little bit of a hole somewhere. It looks like a cigarette burn, which is, you know, kind of on brand. And I mean, <laughs> I would have thought that I did it anyway. <laughs> That's the hole. And it's tiny and I can patch that up so easy because, you know, I do like to make my clothing items last. If there's a tiny hole, don't get rid of it. Patch it up. Easy peasy. I suck at sewing personally. I just never learned how. Um, it's not really in my family to sew, so personally I go to tailors or if it's a small job I have a lot of amazing friends that just patch it up for me because it is like a five minute job and it's really easy apparently. I should learn how, shouldn't I? But this is skirt. <laughs> the next is another skirt and this is a really cute kind of, it's like a mid-length but also kind of long tutu. It's really cute and it looks really cute on. It's um, it's just fun to prance around in as well, so that's cute. The next piece is this velvet plum kind of coloured cardigan, but I'm not going to wear it as a cardigan, I'm going to wear nothing underneath it because I am a devious little witch. <laughs> and I think it's I think it's very cute as a top on its own, you know. It's quite elegant, the, the tag's been cut off so I have no idea where it's from, I'm so sorry. But I think I found this for like three quid as well. I don't, I don't, I, I don't spend much because some of them try and charge an arm and a leg, especially thrifting in England is insane. Thrifting in London specifically is insane. Very expensive. Sometimes they're trying to get retail price for things that have, you know, lost an arm and leg. So I like to really hunt and dig and find the bargains. And if I do fork out more cash on something, it's either because it's true vintage or it's high quality, you know, it, it makes sense. I'm explaining to you the obvious, but I, I feel obliged to anyway. <laughs> The next top I wore in a recent video and I thrifted this from a local and I'm so excited about this. I think I got it for 9 quid, which is probably a bit more expensive for a thrifted top. But I think this brand's pretty good because the tag says end other stories and I like end other stories. I, I, I do like their other things. And that's this. It's like a very cute kind of... <laughs> it's like a peasant top, but you know... I like to dress like a peasant sometimes. And this colour is very sweet. I'm not using right terminology, by the way. Like, I'm not a fashion student. I've studied literature. <laughs> I'm not... I don't know the, the word for this colour, but it's a cute colour, isn't it? <laughs> the next is this super cute cropped... Um, cropped coat jacket. I don't know what you'd call it, really. 
but it looks like this and it's got little um elbow pads <laughs> can you see them the lighting's horrible because it's it's england and it's gloomy <laughs> but you know i hope we get something and on the back here you can see we've got this really fun thingy <laughs> i don't know what it is but it's the next is this oops the next is this dress it's already on a hanger because I am so vigilant. <laughs> this is, you probably can't see it at all, can you? But that's okay because I'll try it on in a minute. But this is a dress and it's just quite basic. It's got a black, it's got a pretty black collar with a pretty velvet bow. I paid five quid for it. So that's decent. I was so excited about this one. Oh my gosh. This is a Ralph Lauren cardigan kind of toppy thing. And it's super cute, and I'm not even shitting you. Look how much I got it for. Five quid. Five quid for a real Ralph Lauren. She gave it to me for five quid because it has this hole in the back. But that's so easily fixed. So easily fixed. You know, a bit of red thread. Bob is your uncle. Very cute. It'll be so cute for spring days. I'm just thinking of spring. I love spring. The next was just a very simple blouse. I've been needing a simple white blouse because I have a lot of white blouses, but they're all quite intricate. You know, I like my vintage white blouses with weird colors. And so I just needed a nice simple one. And this is that one. <laughs> and I got that for six quid from All Aboard. Next up is a cute um, bathing set because I was looking for a bathing set everywhere. I got this from Vinted actually because it's really hard to find decent bathing sets that are actually my size in store for secondhand or vintage pieces. So I found this on Vinted for like three quid, including postage. It was insane. Vinted is insane. I cannot gush enough about Vinted. But this is the top. It's just very basic red. This has a tie. I think that's meant to be the, the, the front, but I like it backwards. <laughs> so I'm going to wear it backwards. And then matching bottoms. So. The final clothing piece is probably the piece that I'm most excited about and that's because it is true vintage 60s stock and it's a matching blouse and tunic and you can see it behind me and I'm so excited about it. I got this from Depop but it was really quite affordable. I think I paid 40 quid for the set for true vintage two things and I'm really excited about this. Look at it. Oh. You can definitely tell my, my style just based on the few things that I've shown you. I like I like wool, I like tunics, I like blouses. <laughs> but this is just adorable, isn't it? I'm obsessed with this. The collar, oh my god, the speed point collar. I'm so excited. Unfortunately, um, I find that a lot of true vintage clothes that I get fit strangely. I don't know, I feel like human body types have obviously evolved, but it's too big in the tummy area and short in the the shoulder area and so I want to get to a tailor and get that taken down a little bit and get the waist taken in a bit and then I can wear it all the time but this is so cute and it's such good quality it's in pristine condition both pieces so I'm thrilled next is shoes <laughs> I know some people will absolutely gut me if I put shoes on the bed so I'm not putting shoes on the bed purely for those people, but just haven't known that I usually do. <laughs> when I found these shoes, I think I almost shed a tear. Before I show you anything, I'm going to show you the price. 35 quid. We can both see that clearly, right? We can both see that clear as hell. 35 quid sticker. Oh, it's upside down. Maybe we couldn't. Now we can both see that. Mew Mew. These shoes are Mew Mew. What do you mean? Ah! I was crying because there's this pair of red, I'll insert a photo, but there's this pair of red Mew Mew Mary Jane heels. And I've been wanting them for so long, ever since I saw them on the runway. And then I come across these. <laughs> 35 quid. <laughs> I could not be more, I am stoked. I'm absolutely stoked. I am gassed. This is incredible. Look at these. Look at these. Oh my god. And the little bow. 
And these are, they're so hard, right? How sexy are these? These are vampires shoes. Ah, they're so hot. 35 quid for Mimi's. <laughs> to keep that red shoe streak running, the next thing I thrifted was these really cute Mary Jane kind of style shoes. Um, and these are from Sha. Shoe. It's pronounced shoe. Someone corrected me for that. Wait, I actually don't know, but oh, there you can see now. It's obviously run down because these are second hand. And these are adorable. They're also surprisingly comfortable. The final pair of shoes that I got were a gift, but they are thrifted. And just you wait until you hear about the story behind these shoes. So this is what they look like. I've got shoe trays in them because these need to be uh, preserved very carefully. So this is what they look like. They're beautiful, right? Aren't they wonderful? One of the most beautiful pairs of shoes I've ever owned in my whole entire life. These shoes are true vintage 1940s. They were kept in storage throughout the war until now, never worn. And then they were a gift to me and I am absolutely I can't believe, I cannot believe that. I can't believe that. I bought them for the first time the other night and I was so scared because they're so beautiful and surprisingly comfortable. But they're so wonderful and I need to protect these with my life. <laughs> True vintage 40s shoes. I am the luckiest girl in the world. That's one of the coolest gifts I've ever received, I'll tell you that much. Now for the homewares. I recently moved flats in London and I had, I had some basic stuff in my last flat, it was a half kitchen, like it was one of those mini kitchens and I didn't need as many things as I need now and also because my flat's a little bit bigger now I've been hosting a lot and having friends over and that's so lovely because I love hosting my friends and making them banana bread and cooking dinner and so I needed a few more things but because I'm a little freak, an abysmal little beast if you will, any cool things, you know, I can't just serve my guests white plates. <laughs> They need to be really cute mismatched plates. And this is what I thrifted the other day. This is Bone China from England. And it's just very cute. It's very nice size. <laughs> I got that for like three quid. And then I got this. And this is, I don't know what this is because the back looks like that. <laughs> but it's really cute. And it's like a kind of bowly, platey. And you know, you can do so many things with this. I was very excited about this. This was four quid. <laughs> and then, oh my gosh, look at this. It's a strawberry plate. It is a little strawberry plate. <laughs> and I love it so much. The back says tea made in China. I think it's Flying Tiger. Because I, I recognize that logo. I think it's Flying Tiger. But I thrifted it for two quid, so. <laughs> and then... This super cute baking dish, you know, because it's versatile and you can do lots of things with them. And look at the little printed flowers. And then I've got these two mugs, which were side by side. <laughs> How incredible is this? So this is obviously the Mona Lisa. Look at her. I love her. And this is the lady with the pearl earring. And it's just so nice to be able to drink my morning tea out of art. <laughs> incredible. Next we have mm, maybe the best part and that's literature and some pieces I got from thrift stores, you know, some books I got from actual thrift stores and then some books I got from World of Books which is an online store that sells secondhand books so it's like kind of more of an accessible direct from secondhand source to you kind of situation. And when you have really specific books in mind that you don't want to buy new, it's amazing for that. And so I'm going to show you what I got from FX. And I only spent like, I think I spent 40 quid on that site, which is probably sounds like a lot, but I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books, two of which are hardcover and quite hard to source. And so I think that that is good. <laughs> I think that that is good. <laughs> First book is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins. This is Penguin 60s Classics, and it's a female gothic feminist piece. Um, from the perspective of the wife who goes insane because you know how there's a massive theme in novels such as Jane Eyre where there's always a wife who goes insane and she's locked away and everyone thinks oh she's insane this is from the perspective of the insane wife and I've read it and I liked it the next is Deathless by Catherine M. Valente and I've not read it yet 
I'm really excited for this set because I've seen so many really cool quotes come from it and I love quotes. I love a highlightable line so very excited for this one. This was also, this was really hard to find as well. I've been looking in store new as well and I've had no luck so excited for that. The next is Goethe's Erotic Poems and I've already read this bad boy and loved it to death. It smells so good too by the way. Oof, this one has been through it. It's musty as hell you can tell and I love it. And it's got a side-by-side -side German and English translation, which I really appreciate. I feel like it adds a lot of value. The next is Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. And this is one of the more raw books I've ever read. I can't think of a better way to describe it. It's about a young girl who leaves her church because she is queer and her family rejecting her as a result of religious trauma and all these kinds of things. And this was intense. This was an intense read and it was beautiful. And I recommend this actually. The rest I've not read yet. So this is Amorous Rites, Elizabethan Erotic Verse. I really am into my erotic verse at the moment. <laughs> the next is The Diary of Anais Nin and I got volume 6 which is 1955 to 1966 and I love her fiction and I love her confessional pieces and so I feel like her journal is going to be really interesting. I don't have her other journals, volume 1 to 5, but I don't know if I need them. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to hunt for them, they're really hard to find. Oh, and this smells like it's been in storage for a while. The next is Daddy by Emma Klein and I love Emma Klein's The Girls wholeheartedly. I think it's such a wonderful book and the writing is so visceral and beautiful and so I'm really looking forward to this. It's a collection of her short stories. I almost bought this new the other day at Waterstones but stopped myself and then found it online for like four quid so. <laughs> and the final one that I got from World Books is Marina Abramovich's Walk Through Walls. Marina's one of my favourite artists. She challenges the way I think so much and really really makes me think about perception a lot and so I'm really excited to read her personal memoir of her works and her life and her story and it's got some images of her art you know as she delves into them a bit so I'm really looking forward to this. I don't read enough memoirs, I don't. I mean I find humans fascinating and everything but I've always been more of a poetry slash fiction girly so I'm trying to tread more into memoir territory. The last two I got from Charity Saws. This is English Romantic Verse. And I got this for one pound, as you can see, and it's just a whole bunch of English romantic verse, Keats adjacent poets, and so I'm really excited for this. And this smells pretty good. <laughs> and then the last book that I got, I got for six pounds from Oxfam, because Oxfam have some really good dedicated um, bookstores where it's a charity store just for books, and they're, quite, they're everywhere, and there's one close to me which I'm really lucky about. And this is Goya, so it's a collection of his art with writing about them, and Goya's also another one of my favourite artists. It's, got, it's even got fold-outs, and I keep on having such amazing luck where I find books on artists that I absolutely adore that have pull-out pieces that I can put on my walls. For example, behind me you will see lots of Botticelli, and then over there there's lots of Da Vinci and so forth. I have I have a nice collection of arts books and artist books, and here's Goya to add to that. That is everything that I have thrifted this month. I thrifted the hat a little bit earlier, I will say that, but I was excited to show you anyway, so I showed you the hat, but everything else was thrifted this month. Beautiful May. Beautiful mid-spring May. I love you. So I've had a very successful thrifting month. I don't need to be thrifting for much more now. I have a few things that I'm on the hunt for, but not much else. I'm quite content with my spring wardrobe at this point. These shoes, I'm still screaming over the Mimi shoes. Are they incredible? And the 40 shoes. Ah! <laughs> I'm a very lucky girl. I'm going to bless you with some of my thrift luck. I have a great thrift luck, so there is some for you. Thank you for watching. Was this fun? No, no. I hope it feels like we're on FaceTime. <laughs> I love you a lot. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful day.